Thanks so much. It, it's just such an incredible pleasure to be here. So Oakhead University acknowledges the ancestral and traditional territories of the Mississaugas of the New Credit, the Haudenosaunee, <clears throat> the Anishinaabe, and the Huron-Wendat, who are the original owners and custodians of the land on which we stand. Today, I will share some thoughts on art and design in our connected world. There are three vectors through which our world is increasingly connected. The Internet of Things, the exponential growth of data, and our reliance on data, and the globalization of culture. These drivers are elements of what the International Geographic Society describes as the Anthropocene Epoch, the first time in the Earth's history in which humans fundamentally transform not only our immediate environment, but the planet's connected systems, its range of living organisms, and its climate and its waters. Artist designers and foresight experts and practitioners are uniquely poised to respond to the world's grand challenges. Hand in hand with science, human science and engineering, our mandate is not only to imagine the future, but to create it. The first vector of the connected world is the Internet of Things. The term Internet of Things, or IoT, was coined in 1999 by the co-founder and executive director of the Auto ID Center, Kevin Ashton, to describe the growing network of physical objects and the communication between these and the internet, also known as machine-to-machine -machine communication. Ashton's point was that things could communicate with each other, collect and analyze data without human intervention. So this is very important, we'll come back to this. Nicely, Cisco expanded the nomenclature of the internet of everything. Now this is clearly worth our attention. According to a 2014 report from Business Insider's Intelligence Unit, the global installed base of IoT devices will explode from 1.9 billion in use today to more than 9 billion by 2018. It's amazing to try and imagine. Now there is opportunity here. 83% of Canadians are eager to adopt IoT technology, more so than their American neighbors, according to a recent survey by Primus and our friend Ryerson University's DMZ, that machine to machine will better their lives, manage their homes, remove stress, and improve fitness and health. And it's no wonder that we are intrigued. Our smartphones have already delivered services that are aware of our location and events in our proximity, providing highly personalized experiences that respond to our behavior that link us through social media. The iPhone's rise is proof of the value of design, the centrality of design, of the difference between ordinary and extraordinary. I'm obviously getting emotional over the iPhone. <laughs> Not surprisingly, given Apple's design chops, the Apple Watch is one of the preeminent mass market IoT wearables. So let's melt the tip of the iceberg of IoT. And I know you've heard about it here at the Board of Trade, but I want to speak about this from a design and art perspective. Household appliances, security, and remote systems can all be controlled remotely and in an integrated way. <clears throat> OCAD University faculty researcher Kate Hartman created Botanicals, a playful product in which a sensor placed in the soil of a household plant texts its need for water to their owner with escalating levels of insistence and then politely thanks them once their thirst is quenched. Of course, with Twitter, everybody knows you're not watering your plant. <laughs> Now, how many of you have a Fitbit or other activity tracker? Can you put your hands up? Okay, it's significant, about a third. <coughs> Interesting. So next generation sports garments collect and relay heart rate and metabolic data drawn from embedded sensors, nanofiber or shaped metal, programmable substrates. Bear with me, I am a key, so I like all this language. But it's very real. It means that biometric data paired with location awareness 
can allow garments to automatically adapt to body comfort and fitness regimes, heating or cooling, tightening or loosening. Many of these fitness products <clears throat> equally apply to wellness, rendering highly personalized care focused on prevention, recovery and intervention by the appropriate professionals, emphasizing self-management and support networks over hospitalization. We're seeing things, administer drugs, act as scales, provide blood sugar and blood pressure data and prompts, and enable remote consultation. Now research indicates that people will not use devices unless there is an elegant interface and experiential incentives. This is another incredible opportunity for design. If we adopt patient-centric systems design, interoperability, and unified standards, we could truly transform both quality and cost of healthcare. Two startups currently nestled into OCAD University's Imagination Catalyst Incubator address health and wellness through quantified self tools. Linksio is a digital brace that helps knee injury patients to manage their routines and provides real-time feedback from their physiotherapist. Mobio Interactive's multimodal mobile mental health platform supports remote monitoring and therapy for individuals with mood disorders and chronic pain. The IoT merged with 3D printing brings global benefits to manufacturing, including the production of personalized medical instruments. 3D printing has accelerated art and design prototyping and small batch runs. The IoT will amplify this dramatic shift to just-in-time distributed manufacturing informing the next generation of e-commerce through remotely managed supply chains. Embedded intelligence in products, both digital and analog, will provide creators and buyers with histories of use, exchange and reuse, and will prompt for maintenance, condition, and sound security alerts. Designers will be instrumental in creating the user interfaces that transform manufacturing into retail activity. Now the IoT can be fun. It offers novel possibilities for entertainment and games, games through the integration of visitors' biofeedback and neural signals, responding to the player's psychological state. In the GTA, our Digital Futures research partner, Marble Live, plans, and I quote, a massive indoor-outdoor water-based amazement park that will be the entertainment and recreational choice for locals and tourists of all ages all year long. Some of the most impactful applications of M2M are in the global urban planning arena or intelligent smart city design. Here, the internet of everything engages with the geography of everything, an expansive concept that describes the infinite data mapping of the physical world as a living atlas, visible through maps and scenes with precise levels of detail. We have the opportunity to integrate data produced by IoT devices, such as air quality sensors or parking meter sensors, smart vehicles and bicycles, and green roofs, with weather, transportation, cellular, social, economic, and other data to manage cities as never before. And with the capacity in the development community in Toronto and the quality of architecture in this city, we can truly lead and succeed. OCAD University collaborates with the University of Toronto's Dr. Eric Miller, the University of Waterloo and its city, IBM, Waterfront Toronto, and other partners to reduce congestion and model the economic impacts of providing communities with appropriate and equitable transit. As the IoT matures, the screen interface will disappear. Devices will make complex decisions based on data that is automatically gathered. These technologies could, could herald rich sensory interaction 
if design for the Internet of Things draws from the performing arts, gesture recognition, and integrates the work of artists in creating physical experiences and installations. So now I will return to Kevin Ashton's dream of the fully autonomous machine-to-machine -machine revolution. Rather, we need a set of strategic and ethical design decisions as to where human agency can and should lie. We must protect our security, make the right choices about our privacy and who owns our data. We must imagine users and uses that recognize and adapt to the vast cultural diversity of the 21st century. In the same way that mobile technologies have allowed the emerging world to jump over in education, healthcare, and micro-business development, we can design IoT applications that address the challenges of the Anthropocene age on the global stage. The second vector that I'll discuss today is our growing reliance on data. The IoT is all about data, one of the remarkable new materials of the 21st century. Data are measurements of other things, physical phenomena, for example, weather patterns, or virtual phenomena, for example, the packets and signals that contained exchanges between Canadians on election night. Data overlaps in three very dynamic ways. Big data, the fast processing of vast quantities of data to help with decision making and automated processes. And big data analytics in the future will increasingly rely on cognitive computing, which tries to replicate human logic twinned with computational speed. Small data, the effect of structuring, that's not such small data, that's big data, the effect of structuring of our personal information to make it useful to us. And thick data, which are ethnographic and design insights placed against big data outcomes. In other words, the human factors. The derived information helps us to identify trends and anticipate events and behaviors. Businesses can draw upon design and art for competitive advantage in the world of big data. Pattern recognition and prediction are core businesses for OCAD University's partners in media, advertising, transportation, or finance. For humans, data are meaningless without curation and representation. Designers, artists, and cognitive scientists are its interpreters. For the Visual Analytics Laboratory at OCAD University, the emphasis is on making data comprehensible and beautiful, offering choices, interaction, and democratic action. Our laboratories explore not only the visual representation of data, but sound, touch, and physical interfaces that allow data to sing for the disabled, or help children time travel through Xenophile Media's Time Tremors Transmedia product. With carbon management company Zero Footprint, we prototyped ambient data sculptures that encourage corporate and individual responsibility for building energy consumption. N-Logic and OCAD University's novel tangible interactive data display facilitates team-based data analysis and collaboration. Our Dean of Liberal Arts and Sciences, Dr. Carolyn Langell, and her Australian collaborator, Lizzie Mueller, recently co-created the Lively Objects exhibition at the Vancouver Museum. One of the most striking works was Germaine Coe's topographic table, which you see here, which elegantly recreates the contours of the mountains north of Vancouver, mixing topography, data analytics, and interior design. Sensors and internet-connected electronics embedded in the table's frame literally cause it to tremble in response to nearby vibrations. This piece of furniture models the geology and the psychic conditions of living near the Cascadia fault line. The audience experiences the constant movement of tremors in real time. A look at visual artists and data provides a natural segue 
to today's third vector of connectivity, the engagement of art with science and society with an increasingly global art world. Art and science have danced a half century of fecund tango to the rhythm of out-of-the-box invention. OCAD University's reconfigured its classical life drawing program into life studies, studying body and environment, mixing bioscience, medicine, and studio art. We plan to build the Boom, Bang, and Squish Lab, a dedicated material, science, and life studies center where we can cook up tissue cultures and smart materials. Our colleague, Dr. Jennifer Willett of the University of Windsor, has spawned her bioart lab with the following mandate. Environmental conditions can be controlled towards the assisted proliferation of life, but also as a site that supports the proliferation of new ideas. The Imagination Catalyst startup Biome Energy is briskly gathering momentum for its next generation wind turbine which is based on the properties of an owl, a kingfisher, and a lotus leaf, of course, connected to the Internet of Things. Artists practice social and cultural intervention outside of the traditional gallery. And of course, the gallery system is alive and well, and we should be proud of it in Toronto. However, when we look at the theme of Venice's 56 BNL of contemporary art this world, it is all the world's features and includes reflections upon the nature of labor in the 21st century, the contestation of rights for environmental crisis and environmental crises. And the work is beautiful and in a dialogue with those very key issues in our lives. In a time of mass culture homogenization, visual art retains the ability to speak personally and viscerally to all of us. Our university recently hosted artist Rick Lowe, the recipient of a MacArthur Foundation Genius Grant, who undertakes social sculpture. Lowe galvanized a neighborhood in Houston where he inspired community members, architects and designers in project row houses to repurpose shotgun homes, clean up the neighborhood, and build a community through individuals, art practices, education, and job creation. His collaborator, Mel Chin, will be in residence at OCAD University and will speak on March 9th. Please join us. Artists also use IoT to herald change. Our professor, Dr. David McIntosh's Quipukamayak, is a transmedia digital game wearable controller set that are also musical instruments played simultaneously in two Andean communities, one in Peru and the other in Argentina. And our Art for Social Change program focuses support on such collaborations at home. Toronto boasts a trend-setting art council that is the envy of cities around the globe. I want to really underscore this. It has taken important measures to foster culture at the local level through the Neighborhood Arts Network. It is a creative force enabling professional newcomers to find their footing, foster diversity, in the art community. And such strong, strong connectivity is so important in building a successful Toronto. Our Nuit Blanche iterates around the world, delighting audiences of 1.2 million with powerful and thoughtful commissions. Contemporary art, 1.2 million people viewing contemporary art, incredible. Attracting international curators and audiences, including significant tourism dollars. Since 2006, the event has generated over 268 million in economic impact for Toronto, with 42 million in this year alone. Toronto, with our allies in Waterloo and Ottawa, is well placed to lead in the global Anthropocene because of our wealth of cultural industries, our history of mobile innovation, and our arts, humanities, and design capacity. In fact, Toronto is the epicenter of Canada's cultural industries, with an estimated 11.3 billion in GDP in Toronto in 2011. We must integrate the creative bench strength with our science brilliance 
in biomedical research, robotics, chemistry, data analysis, law, social science, and business. And we have an amazing concentration of colleges that play at the world stage as well as universities. And a shout out to my colleague from George Brown who is here. What do these mean for OCAD University as we near our 140th year? So it's not all about technology. It's about historic technology, print, too. We are a maker culture. Studio learning, whether in art, design, curation, or digital media, emphasizes the importance of integrating body and mind, an approach that the best engineering and science schools in the world are struggling to emulate. Our culturally diverse and indigenous students access traditional and leading edge technologies, peer learning, and critical thinking. We meld the studio and laboratory together in applied creative research. And we try to send our students out to the world. Photographer Peter Ceramic has created Intact, where students collaborate with international partners, institutions, faculty, and students through group discussions, online exchange, and video conferences with schools in South Korea, Germany, India, Japan, and Finland, often very early in the morning, especially for art students, can you imagine? And they mount an annual exhibition. They probably just stay up all night. So OCAD University respects the past, yet it's future forward respectfully embracing the indigenous values of taking responsibility for the seven generations to come. Our focus on strategic foresight and innovation combines design and business thinking to solve hard problems. Our new Design for Health graduate degree reflects the complexity of health needs in today's societies. But it's not about OCAD University alone. The Anthropocene epoch raises fundamental philosophical, philosophical questions. Writer Catherine Hales suggests that the lines between human and machine, quote, should more accurately be considered a borderland with inflexible and reconfigurable boundaries, unquote. And design thinker Alex Manu argues that the IoT demands not only data and design, but art because, and I quote, Art provides inspiration and connects us with beauty, which in turn inspires us to seek for more beauty. Giving people the ability to dream about a better future takes more than persuasion. He says, it requires the ability to open people's imagination to a new realm of possibility and empower them to get there. At OCAD University, we recently launched our private and public fundraising campaign, Ignite Imagination. Please help us ima put imagination to work and ensure that Toronto both imagines and realizes a beautiful future in our connected world. Thank you.